Welcome back to Harder Unboxed. A couple of weeks ago, you might have seen my live stream on the channel, our first ever live stream, where I built a new test system with the help of Intel, Gigabyte, and PC case gear. Aside from a few technical issues, the stream was a ton of fun, and I hope all those that watch live to chat with Steve and me had a blast. Anyway, in that stream, I only showed the completed build briefly and didn't talk anything about overclocking results or anything else to do with performance because I simply didn't have time to get into that on the stream. But in this video, you'll get to see the finished build with respectable cable management, unlike the version I showed in the stream, and I'll discuss a little bit about the overclock I managed. So basically, I built the system for testing various things on Intel's latest Coffee Lake platform. I already built an AMD test system several weeks ago, complete with the Ryzen 7 2700X and a brand new Gigabyte Aorus X470 motherboard. This latest build is essentially an Intel version of that, so now I have both an Intel and AMD build with the latest parts from both companies. Expect some exciting game testing from me when the PC release season kicks back into gear in a couple of months. The key component in this build is, of course, the Intel Core i7-8700. K. Intel provided us with this chip directly as a retail sample, so it'll be interesting to see how it overclocks and whether this is a golden sample. Considering this is just a simple sealed retail chip rather than an Intel QS chip like they usually give out for day one reviews, I doubt it'll be anything special, but we'll certainly find out later. The motherboard is Gigabyte Z370 Aorus Ultra Gaming Wi-Fi with 32 gig of integrated Optane memory. Gigabyte do offer a version of this motherboard without Optane, and at the time of the live stream, the Optane version was just $15 more than the non-Optane version, which I thought was a pretty good deal, especially for those building a system with that ultra-fast NVMe SSDs. Right now, though, the Optane model is $50 more than the standard model through Amazon, which is much closer to the Optane model's $57 sale price. The Optane board is definitely harder to recommend at that price. I'd probably wait until it gets closer to that $15 price difference again, but those that straight up don't want Optane can get every other feature of this board in the non-Optane version. Aside from Optane, this board does provide a ton of RGB, like ludicrous amounts of RGB, even for things like the PCIe sockets and DIMM slots, and what appears to be a 4 plus 3 phase VRM solution with heat sinks. Slotting into this board, we have Team Group's T-Force Nighthawk RGB DDR4 memory, a 2x8GB kit with DDR4 3000 speeds, and their unique heat spreader design looks pretty good here, although it was a bit of a challenge to sync up the RGB effect using Gigabyte's RGB software. It seems to work some of the time, which I guess is good enough, though it's not something I'll mess around with too much for just a test system. For cooling, we have the Be Quiet Silent Loop 280, which should provide enough thermal capacity for a respectable overclock of the 8700K. I installed that in the front with an embarrassing amount of difficulty, so go back and check the stream for some awkward issues there. Entirely my fault there, the cooler is actually quite easy to install if you're not a dingus like me. Anyway, everything I've just mentioned is installed in another Be Quiet product, the Dark Base 700, which I quite like with its PSU shroud RGB lighting on the front and tempered glass side panel. There's also plenty of room for cable management on the rear, so there wasn't too much drama shoving all the cables into that space and forgetting about it. The case also comes with a fan controller, which is pretty neat. The case's rear fan is a basic affair, so I added some bling to it with Fantex 140mm halos, which since the stream have actually gotten working. A pretty neat concept if you don't want to pay for RGB fans and just want to use your existing ones. The SSD is also RGB, if you can believe it. Take a look at the Team Group Delta RGB SSD, which on their website they call the Magnificent version. It's a basic 256GB SATA drive, but the cool feature is its massive RGB panel on the front. There's so much RGB here, I just had to tape it to the inside of the main compartment of the case. Like I mentioned while building the system, the drive doesn't matter too much in a test system as we already have our standard test system drives, so this SATA model will be fine for now. Hidden away under the shroud is a new power supply from Be Quiet, the Straight Power 11650 Watt, which at the time of the stream didn't even have a picture on Amazon. It does now though, and it's a neat, fully modular unit with an 80 plus gold certification. And of course, the GPU, which you will be familiar with if you saw my AMD test system build. It's the Gigabyte GeForce GTX 1070 Ti from that build. My AMD test system is currently loaded up with a Vega 56 card, so I had the 1070 Ti spare, and it made sense to chuck it in this system for now. So you've probably seen a ton of B-roll of the build by now, and I reckon it looks pretty awesome for a test system. That RGB SSD in particular just adds to the craziness inside. Big thanks to Intel, Gigabyte, and PC case Gear for helping set the system up. If you're ever interested in what Intel system I'm using to test stuff, this is it. 
In terms of overclocking, I've been messing around with the system over the last few days, and it seems this 8700K is one that reaches 5 gigahertz reasonably easily, but cannot push up to 5.1 gigahertz, at least on this board with this sort of cooling. I achieved 5 gigahertz just using Gigabyte's auto voltage and auto LLC options, with voltages hovering around the 1.39 to 1.41 volt mark. CPU temperatures were just above 90 degrees Celsius, and VRM temps, they were a bit toasty in the mid 100s as well under an Ida 64 stress test. 5.1 GHz though was problematic, I couldn't achieve it with auto settings and pushing LLC settings to the max and shifting voltages up to 1.42 volts just didn't do the trick. Possibly running into a heat issue there with 5.1 GHz that a D-lid might solve, but that's not something I'll be doing here. In any case, I wanted to achieve 5 GHz and I'm happy with that, but this retail chip definitely isn't a golden sample by any stretch. I might even push the system down to 4.9 GHz to ensure top line stability and keep temperatures at an even better level. I'll have to keep tinkering with the system over the next few weeks to see what it can do. Anyway, that's it for this recap of my latest Intel test system. If you're interested in the parts seen in this video, there are links to all of that in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe for more hardware unbox content, and I'll catch you in the next one.